All right, girls, uh, today what we're going to be doing is starting off our final topic for advanced maths, which is financial mathematics. So in this topic, you're going to learn all about the stuff to do with simple interest and compound interest once again. But before that, there are certain patterns that you've got to analyze uh, before we go on, and these are called arithmetic progressions and geometric progressions. So let's just start on um, the very simple theory on... Uh, page one and also what I've done here is I've included all the uh, syllabus stop points So if you want to read those yourself um, at the very end of the topic to analyze whether you know everything um, That'll be excellent. Okay, and if you need help with anything here uh, Let me know as well So first thing is uh, series and sequences. What are sequences? So sequences are a set of numbers in a list that follow a pattern um, So you can see here that this would be a pattern that where you got a plus two to each number and that will get to the next number. A series is a pattern involving the sum of the terms. So um, instead of just listing them out, separated by commas, you do have that plus sign between them. Okay. Then uh, what you need to know is what a general term is. So a general term of a sequence or a series follows a rule or pattern. So you can say uh, this term is term one, this term is term two, this term is term three, and this term is term four. That's what it basically means. So it's associated with the position of where it is and the value of that term. Now, for exercise uh, 1.1, write down the first three terms of the following sequences uh, given each of the formulas and then for the nth term and then explain how each term is obtained from the previous term. Great. So you already know how to substitute numbers in. So if we want to find out T1 given T of N, okay, so the nth term, this is what it means. Okay, so this is the nth term. Um, the nth term is given by 4 plus 2n. Now, if n in this case is the number 1, I'll have 4 plus 2 times 1, which is simply 4 plus 2, and that is 6. If I do the same thing to the next ones, okay, it's self-explanatory. It's basically like substitution, that's it. Um, you get all these things here. Okay, so you get 6, 8, and 10. Um, so what's the rule here? Okay, how do you get from one number to the next? All you're going to do is uh, times 2. Okay, that's the rule. Oh, oh, no, no. That's not times 2. It's plus 2. Whoops. Sorry, my math is so bad today. Uh, question B. T of n is 4 to the power of n. So raise 4 to the power of 1 first. For term 1, that's 4. 4 squared is simply 16. And 4 cubed is 64. Okay. So what's the method or rule to get from one term to another? Uh, evidently, it's times 4. C. T of n is 3 root 2 to the power of n. If you raise this to the power of 1, that's root 2. If you raise this to the power of 2, uh, well then that would be 9 times 2, uh, which is 18. And 3 root 2 cubed uh, would simply be... 54, yeah, 54, uh, root 2, okay? The reason why I say that is because to get from there to there, you just multiply by another 3 root 2. So you multiply this by 3 root 2, and you get this. So the rule is to get from 1 to another is times by 3 root 2, okay? Right, uh, I'm not going to go ahead with part D, don't worry about that actually. Um, but I want to actually say to you that Whenever some um, term formula has something n, like let's say t of n equals to like 3n, 4n, 7n, minus 10n, whatever it is, this number tells you how much it's going up or down by, okay? Whereas if you have some base to the power of n like this, doesn't matter how ugly it is, like that, so some base to the power of n, um, it follows a multiplicative rule, so you're multiplying it by the base. Okay, so the rule for this one is, you know, plus 3, plus 4, plus 7, minus 10, whereas this one is times 3, times 2, and times root 10. Okay, that's the difference. And what we call these later on is APs, what we call these later on are GPs. Okay, you'll soon learn that. Right, question 2. Uh, write down the first 12 terms of the sequence 7, 12, 17, and 22. How many terms are less than 30? Uh, well, uh, well, if I, if I write down the first 12 terms, I'll just write it on top, basically. 
Uh, I'll have 7, 12, 17, 22. And the rule is plus 5, really, if you analyze that. So it's going to be 27, 32, uh, 37, 42. Okay, I think I need um, 4 more. So 47, 52, 57, 62. And I think that should be 12. Yes, it is. So how many times are less than uh, 30? It is just 5. Okay, up to 27. How many terms are less than 60? Well, it goes up to this point, which is 11 numbers, I believe. Let me just count that just in case. Yep, it's 11. Okay. How many terms lie between 20 and 40? So between 20 and 40 will be these numbers here. And that will be the number 4. How many terms lie between 10 and 50? 10 and 50, it will be somewhere around here, I think. So how many is that? If we count that, that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, there's eight of them. Okay, what is the tenth term? Okay, so there's, let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's the tenth term, 52. What number term is 37? Okay, well, we'll count it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So Number 37 is the 7th term. Okay? Or you can say, or oh, this is T, or oh, not TM, T7. Is 87 the term in the sequence? Um, well, what do we think? If you have a look at the pattern, the end numbers always end with 2 or 7. See? 2 or 7, 2 or 7, 2 or 7. Uh, so if you go on, it's, it's bound to have 87 because 82 and 87 with part of the sequence, so yes. Is 201 a term in the sequence? No, because it ends with the number one. Our numbers only end with two or seven, so you can see the pattern here. This wouldn't be part of the sequence. Find the first term greater than 45. Okay, so if you look at the sequence, uh, which one's greater than 45? It will be this one, so it's just 47. And then find the last term that is greater, uh, find the last term that is less than 43. And that is the number 42. Okay, that's it for these questions. Uh, question three. The nth term of a sequence is given by that formula. All right. Put Tn is 42, which means that the term is 42. Show that the term 42 is the 10th member of the sequence. Okay, which means that we've got to uh, prove that N is number 10. Okay, cool. Let's do that. All right, so we'll go 42 equals 4n plus 2, and it's a simple rearrangement. Subtract 2 to both sides, and then divide by 4, and, oh, I can't say 10 equals 4, that's ridiculous. Uh, 10 equals 10, there you go. So, therefore, um, we've proved it, it's the 10th term of the sequence. All right, now let's put t of n is 35, and show that it's not a member. Okay, let's have a look at what it turns out to be. So 35 equals to uh, 4n plus 2. 35 minus 2 is 33, which equals 4n. Now, if you divide 33 by 4, look what it gets you. 8.25. You can't say a term is the 8.25th term. Okay, there has to be whole numbers. All right, rankings or positions of numbers have to be uh, whole numbers which are positive, okay, one or above. So you can't have this. So therefore, uh, 35 is not a member. Okay, since this is a, uh, not a whole number, okay. Since n equals 8.25 is not uh, greater or equal to 1, and not an integer. Okay? You can just say positive integer, really. Okay? Uh, C. Similarly, find if 102, 203, and 842 are members of the sequence. So let's do that together. Um, we'll, we'll put 102 equals to 4n plus 2. Okay? Solve for that so that if you move to the other side, Okay, you get this, and equals 25, and that's okay. So 102 is a uh, member of sequence. 
If I do the same thing to 203, okay, 201 divided by 4 is going to be 50.25. So that's no good, is it? Okay. Uh, and then if I go on to um, 842, Right, that's going to be 4n plus 2 minus thing 2 to both sides is 840 is 4n. So 840 divided by 4 is 210, and that's okay because it's a whole number. So the only one that's not okay is this one here. Okay, moving on. 4. Find whether 19 and negative 25 are members of the sequence t of n is that, and if so, what terms are they? All right, so 19 equals to 40 minus 7n. Let's subtract both sides by 40, so that you get minus 21 equals minus 7n. Dividing both sides by negative 7, and we're equal to 3. So um, 19 is a member, and we can say, therefore, the third term is equal to 19. Let's analyze negative 25. If I move 40 to the other side, it's minus 65 equals 7. And if I divide both sides by negative term, I get 9.28 and so on. So that means that negative 25 is not a member. Okay? Alright, 5. Uh, find whether 9, 27, 83 are members of the sequence tn equals 3 to the power of n. So remember how I told you about 3 to the power of n, or anything to the power of n. Uh, when you go from t1 to t2 to t3 to t4, the numbers must multiply by 3. So all of this basically are multiples of 3. Okay? So, um, you can clearly see which ones here aren't multiples of 3, which is that one, but we'll prove it. So if I substitute in 9 there, you know that n equals to 2, so that's okay. If I substitute in 27, okay, you know that 3 to the power of 3 gives you 27, so n is 3, that's okay. But when you get 83 equals to 3 to the power of n, and you know, you, you do the log of both sides, um, move into the front, okay, and then divide both sides by log 3, okay, so log 83 divided by log 3, uh, n would equal to 4.02, so on, so because of that um, extra decimal there, okay, it wouldn't be a member. Okay, so therefore, 83 is not a member. Okay. Alright, question 6. The nth term of a sequence is given by tn is 8n plus 3. How many terms of the sequence are less than 80? So as soon as it says how many terms, okay, this is referring to n equals something. Okay? So... Uh, let's have a look. So if it's less than 80, and this is the term formula, then we have to set that formula, which represents all the terms, being less than 80. So we're simply solving for an inequality. Okay? So if we solve for this inequality and subtract 3 to both sides, 8n is less than 77. 77 divided by 8 is 9.625. Okay? So how many of those terms are less than 80? This says that the 9.65th term, or 9.625th term, uh, and below, right, is going to be giving a term less than 80. So we count from the first number that's less than this, which is the number 9, okay? So like T1 all the way to T9, all of these numbers here, they're all going to be less than 80, and we can prove that. You know, you don't really have to write this bit down, um, but I can tell you that's going to be 
11, then 8 times 9 plus 3, that's 35. So up to 75 is your last term that's less than 80. Okay? Question B. How many terms of the sequence are less than 200? Do exactly the same thing. So 8n plus 3 is less than 200. So track 3 over. 197. 197 divided by 8. N would be less than 24.625. And again, once again, ask yourself, what N value is the first whole number less than this decimal? It would be number 24. So there are 24 terms less than 200. What is the first term of the sequence that is greater than 125? So we set our term formula. Whoops. Let's set our term formula and we make that greater than 125. No issue there. If I subtract 3 of both sides, I will get um, 122. 122 divided by 8 is 15.25. And the first term that is in the sequence that is greater than 125 will be the term's position indicated by something bigger than 15.25, which is the number 16. Now that doesn't end there because the question says, what is the first term? Okay, it's not asking for the position of it or how many there are. Um, it is the term. So we do T16 would equal to 8 times 16 plus 3. 8 times 16 plus 3, which is 131. And that's the first term that is greater than 125. Okay? 7. How many terms of the sequence that are less than 14? So, let's set the formula and make it less than 14. Okay? So the first thing we can see is that this becomes a quadratic if we move this to the other side with highest power of 2 to the base uh, n. So n squared minus 5n minus 14 is less than 0. And by factorizing this, we get n plus 2 n minus 7 less than 0. Now, when you graph this out, okay, this is going to be a concave up parabola with negative 2 being here, 7 there. And when you graph this out, which part of the graph is below 0 as y values? It's this. Okay. So then n has to be between negative 2 and 7. However, you now got to think about what n values are acceptable. n is a position. Okay. The position of a number has to start with a number 1. So... We say, but n has to be greater or equal to 1. Okay? So, that means that n has to be less than 7. So, we copy this bit down. But this bit is wrong. It can't be something that is a negative number. So, we can't count 0. We can't count negative 1. We can't count negative 2. So, we say that it's greater or equal to 1. Um, and now you've got to think about, well, n... Okay, the position of the term has to be le less than the seventh term. What's the first term less than the seventh term? It would be the sixth term. Oops. So we're going to change this. Number six. And so that means, what this means is uh, T1 all the way to T6. Okay, all of these are less than 14. Right? So... How many terms is that? T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6. That's six terms. So we say six terms are less than 14. And that's it. Right? All right. Part A. In each part, the two lines define a sequence Tn. The first line gives the first term T1. The second line defines how each subsequent term, Tn, is obtained from the previous term, Tn minus 1. Write down the first four terms of each sequence. Okay. So let me analyze this. T1 being 4. This means the first term of your sequence is number 4. Okay. 
and we're asked to write the first four terms of each sequence. So let's just write down the first term, number one. Okay? Now, the second line here defines how the next term is going to be like. So what this is saying is the term equals to the term previous to it because, you know, if you think about it, um, n minus 1 is right before n. Okay? So it's asking for the previous one, right? So if I say t1 is 4, okay, which I can list out like that again, uh, t2 would equal to t2 minus 1 plus 3. What's t2 minus 1? Okay, where n is 2, right? Uh, it will be t1 plus 3, and that's equal to, uh, what's t1? 4 plus 3, so I'm just replacing that by 4, and that will give me 7. Okay, so if you continue this pattern, that means the next term is the previous term plus 3. So term 3 would equal to that plus 3, which is 10, and t4 would be equal to term 3, which is 10, plus 3, which is 13. Now if you have a look at the next one, um, again, t1 is 52. Tn, the term, is the previous term plus 10. So the previous term plus 10 will be 62. Okay. Term 3 will be second term, which is 62 plus 10. That's 72. And T4 will be that previous term, which is 72 plus 10. That's 82. Part C. The first term is 40. The rule for the next term is half of the previous term. Okay, so whenever you see t of n minus 1, that means previous term. So t2 will be half of t1, okay, which is going to be half of 40, and that's 20. And if we continue this on, term 3 is going to be half of term 2. That's 10. Term 4 is half of 10, which is going to be 5. D, term 1 equals 3. Tn, the term, is negative 1 times the previous term. So term 2 would be the negative of term 1, which is 3. Term 3 is negative 1 times term 2, which is going to be 3. And term 4 is negative 1 times term 3, which is just negative 3. So all you're doing is just multiplying by negative 1 each time to get to the next part. Alright? And there's your homework, which you can do maybe after your trials. If you really want to do it now, so that you don't have to think about it after trials, go ahead and do it. Okay, so this is also posted in um, the assignment box as well as um, the uh, end of this booklet. Okay, and then next lesson we'll start on segmentation.